What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over all my PS1 JRPGs and there's quite a few to go over and I want to say I probably have maybe half the library. So no gameplay footage, we're going to go game for game. First we have Legend of Mana, um, pretty decent game in the Mana series. Um, you know, I do like the artwork in this game, you know, pretty good game in the Mana series. It has been many years since I've played it, though. Alundra 2, I do not remember ever playing this. Uh, Activision put it out. You remember the first Alundra uh, working designs, right? It was a working designs game, but I don't have that one. Next up, we have Guardians Crusade. Uh, for the longest time, this thing was just a couple bucks, and just recently, this thing started going up in price, but find it for, uh, you know, five, ten bucks in, like, bargain bins. Uh, Guardians Crusade, I've seen it for, like, 20 bucks at conventions. They're crazy. Um, here we go, Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, everybody raved about this game uh, back in high school. Um, you know, friends of mine, they absolutely loved it. And uh, a lot of people I know, this game actually got them into RPGs and uh, SRPGs. So, Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, next up, we have Final Fantasy IX. We have Final Fantasy Origins. And this is the original Final Fantasy and a remake of, you know, 1 and 2. So, you know, pretty cool. Um I guess this is a Suryuki. This is a uh, strategy RPG, you know, kind of fun game. It's, uh, you know, not the greatest game or anything like that. And uh, next up we have the Final Fantasy Anthology. So I forget what games are actually on here. So it looks like 5 and 6. So Final Fantasy 5 and 6 on the PlayStation 1. And next up, uh, great, uh, great RPG, turn-based RPG. Uh, Chrono Cross, it's still cheap. You can get this thing like 15, 20 bucks, and it's probably one of the best on the system, which is kind of crazy. Um, next up, this is, uh, I've never even played this. I don't even know how you pronounce the name of this. Um, and uh, one of Eric's Landon's newest videos, he said this is like one of the worst RPGs on the PlayStation 1. Um, you know, I don't know, never played it. Okay, next up we have Final Fantasy Chronicles. That's Final Fantasy, I guess, 4 and Chrono Trigger. Um, the PS1 version of Chrono Trigger, guys, that was the first time I ever saw those like animated cutscenes in Chrono Trigger, which were added into the Nintendo DS version, which would probably be the definitive way, or, or maybe you would consider this the definitive way to play Chrono Trigger. Um, I'm a big fan of Chrono Trigger on the PS1. You know, love the anime cutscenes. They they got a good artist to uh, illustrate that, whatever his name is. He's a famous anime artist, whatever his name is. Anyway, next up we have Grandia. You know, Grandia, you know, you guys have played Grandia. Justin and Sue and, you know, a bunch of lovable characters. Next up, we have Valkyrie Profile. This is a turn-based, uh, kind of timing-based RPG. This was uh, before Enix got with Square. Um, yeah, this game's kind of gone up in price, I'd say, over the last 10 years, but fun game. Next up, I don't know if you would consider this an RPG. I guess it's a action RPG, if anything else, but that's Misadventures of Tron Bond, but... Um, I got this other game right here. It's not a uh, not an RPG, but this is a fighting game, Energize, or whatever, however you pronounce that. But it's got clout from uh, Final Fantasy VII, so I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting, something to point out. Next up, a very easy strategy RPG, and that's Rhapsody. Um, I actually found this not that long ago, maybe a year, year and a half ago. It was like 30 bucks, so I got it. Uh, next up is a game I played and loved as a kid. This was the first, uh, this is a Brave Fencer Musashi. This was the first action RPG I remember, like, really getting into, you know, even before, like, uh, Secret of Mana and stuff like that. But yeah, Brave Fencer Musashi, great game. Okay, next up we have Beyond the Beyond. Funny thing about this game, I feel like this game plays out a lot like... Oh, there's a series. Uh, Suikoden, Sakoden. I don't know. I feel I feel like they play similar, but anyway, with one of Eric Landon's newest uh, RPG videos, like the worst RPGs, just like I pointed out with another game, this game was on there. But he said it wasn't that bad. I don't know why I keep referencing Eric Landon, but anyway, Beyond the Beyond, decent game. Uh, next up we have Vandal Hearts Two, strategy RPG. Next up, we have Dragon Valor, a Namco. I would consider this uh, its an action game. I would consider this an action RPG, definitely. But anyway, Dragon Valor, it's a Namco game. Next up, excellent Star Ocean game. That is Star Ocean, the second story. Uh, we didn't get the first game on the Super Nintendo out here in the U.S., but we did get this. And again, you can see uh, Enix, the same people that did Valkyrie Profile. 
Great battle system on this one, but Starish in the second story. And next up, another game people went nuts over back in high school, and that's uh, Xeno Gears. That is Square Enix or Square Soft at their best. Uh, next game, 3D RPG that's good. Um, I wish the graphics were like you know, 2D sprite based, but that is Legend of Lagaya. And next up, we have Konami RPG Sakoden. And a favorite of a lot of people, we have Sakoden 2. And some Capcom RPGs that I like. Um, I have like the first one and second one, I think, on the Super Nintendo. But here we have Breath of Fire 3 and Breath of Fire 4. Excellent games. And they're, they're, now, you know, they're not too pricey if you want to hunt them down. Uh, I showed you the second one. This is a really good strategy RPG. That is Vandal Hearts. Uh, blood squirts everywhere, and it's like it's a really funny game. Uh, you know, I really recommend this game if you're not into strategy RPGs. This game will will let you cross that mental barrier and get you in strategy RPGs. At least it did for me. I really recommend this game. It's Vandal Hearts. And next up, God, there's more. Um, here we have Saga Frontier. I have them in a plastic case for some odd reason. But it's it's two of them. Saga Frontier 1 and 2. If, if it's been years since I played just this one, um, I don't think I ever played the sequel. I heard it was a terrible game, but <laughs> anyway, as your dreams. Oh, God, I forget what this game's like, but I remember playing this and kind of liking it, guys. But Konami RPG, and it should be pretty cheap. I don't remember paying a lot for that one. Uh, next game is an action RPG by Squaresoft, and that's Threads of Fate. Good little story on that one. Here's two more games I saw sitting on the shelf, but here we have Final Fantasy VII, and we have a copy of Vagrant Story. Um, that's a pretty cool game from what I remember. I remember really getting into this, and I think it was like 2000 or 2001, this game coming out. And if I'm not mistaken, you can still download it on a PS3 and play it on a Vita through the PlayStation Store, I think you know, without doing like molecular shell and like all that crazy stuff to your Vita. But yeah, Vagrant Story and uh, Final Fantasy VII. And next up we have, we only got a few left guys. Um, we got Tales of Destiny uh, 1 and 2. These are not related to each other really at all. Um, you can see it's, <laughs> that's got the price tag, what I paid for it back in the day. Um, you know, this is uh, Tales of Destiny, and this is really Tales of uh, Eternia. Um, you can get this game in English on the PSP, uh, PAL, which it's region-free, so you can still play it with your PSP. Um, but Tales of Destiny 2 is Tales of Eternia. Um, two different games, but these are both really good uh, action RPGs on the PlayStation 1. Um, you know, they've gotten kind of pricey over the years. Uh, but last, uh, last, but by no means not least, these are my favorite RPGs on the PlayStation 1. These games are the reason why I started buying and even collecting RPGs on the PlayStation 1. Um, my favorite game growing up was Lunar. The remake of Lunar on the PlayStation 1. Lunar, the Silver Star Story Complete. You know, God, what can I say about this game? Um, guys, I consider this game to be a masterpiece. Um, you know, even if you you don't need, like, the collector's edition, like, complete. I'm just, like, a big fan of the series. So, uh, you know, I got other collectibles in the Lunar series and, you know, stuff that's kind of pricey, actually. Um, but I'm a huge fan of this RPG. Um, you know, I even went back and I got the Sega CD version, played that. You know, I've played ports on this on PSP, um, you know, Game Boy Advance. There's been many ports of this game. It, it is an excellent it's an excellent masterpiece. I'm not going to lie. You know, I highly recommend it. You know, look for Lunar Silver Star Story Complete and a game that's just as good as that. And the way to do a sequel right, in my opinion, we have Lunar 2 Eternal Blue. Now, both of these games were released on the Sega CD. Um, you know, I went back and got them years later. And, uh, you know, I like the PS1 versions better. But, God, could you imagine us getting modern-day remakes of this, these games? Like, we got the Secret of Mana, like, Lunar. That's just me. I'm weird. But I think there'd be, like, a small fan base for something like that. But, guys, that's everything I got for the PS1. Um, there might be a few other things floating around here. If if there are, you know, they're not... Uh, they're not within arm's reach. I can't get to them. Um, I'd love to know what you guys love and play on the PlayStation 1. I do like to shoot them up on the system, but um, I probably got maybe 20 or 30 of them. We can go over them one day. 
Um, but yeah, tell me what PS1 RPGs you guys like. You know, my favorite's Lunar, but what's your favorite? Anyway, love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Till next time, peace out.